My name is Tony Swanton. I'm a blacksmith. I make suits of armor and swords. My business is making weapons for movies, video games, television shows, commercials. Blizzard Entertainment approached me to make an axe called Gorehal. So this is the Gorehal. These are some really cool 3D renderings that show it in detail. This weapon is steeped in lore from Warcraft 3, and this is the guy who wields it. This is this crazy orc from Hellscream. We will never be slaves! He actually uses this blade and plunges it right into the head of Manoroth which basically kills this demon and, you know, had a huge impact on the world. Very cool. This weapon actually got its name because of the sound it makes when it swings through the air. You know, it's orc through and through. Yeah. Imagine orcs have these big, massive hands, right? And, you know, that probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this, I'm not going to make it solid. The scale of what we're talking about for your build here would make it 100 pounds just for this portion. Okay. This is going to be a really fun build. Fantastic, man. Great. Well, thank you cool. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. This is a rendering that I'm going to use as the basis for making this. We transferred the pattern of the sides of the blade onto a piece of eighth inch hot rolled steel plate. And then I will have Brian take the plasma cutter and cut out the shape of the steel. The plasma cutter will strike an arc onto the metal, and a high-pressure stream of air will come through, vaporizing the metal. And then I take it over to the belt grinder and use the 36-grit belt and grind off all of the slag, grind it directly to the profile line. This is the outside cutting edge. To make the cutting edge of the blade, I'm actually taking 3 16 1075 hard carbon steel. Take it out at a red heat, probably about 15 to 1800 degrees, and bring it over to the pneumatic forging hammer and start bending it in half. Just fold it in two, flatten it completely down. And I made a specific tool that fits in my fly press that I'll wedge it open so it looks like it's an inch thick steel when it's only 3 16 The cutting edge has been the main challenge. I spent about six hours forming a cutting edge, and when I went to split it open, it uh, literally split open. And uh, you'll hear that little tink, which means that you develop a crack and that everything's just junk on the floor. This is It ripped and folded in. It thinned down too much, and uh, it ripped. So this is what we refer to in the business as catastrophic failure. So I'm just going to make another one that uh, meets my quality standards. So I'm going to sacrifice this paper pattern to make my oak handle here. This is a chunk about two inches thick of red oak. I took the original photocopy and glued it directly onto the workpiece. The overall length of the axe is just under four feet. So uh, take it to the bandsaw, cut it out. And then shaped it on the coarse belt on the belt grinder. My wife, Karen, is a great sculptor. Karen will be working on the decorative cast bronze skull on the top and also the butt cap or the skull crusher on the bottom. And she can sculpt the pieces in a Chabon oil-based clay and mold them in RTV silicone and then plaster jacketed mold. We don't want to have a solid casting because the piece would weigh 60, 70 pounds from the block. So we pour the wax in there, allow it to cool around the edges, and then we transfer that wax into a can. Then we put the can inside of a burnout oven and melt the wax out of there, leaving the cavity. We bring it out of the burnout oven at about 900 degrees, melt the bronze up to about 1800 degrees in a melting furnace, and pour the molten bronze into the flask, and then quench it in the water, revealing the solid bronze casting and uh, miraculously, you have a skull and a big mace butt cap kind of shows up. The back of the axe is cut out of 3 16 hot rolled steel, and then the top of the axe is just out of 8 inch hot rolled steel. 
then it gets welded all the way around. The spikes that I'll forge out under the power hammer from Chromoly after heating them in the forge and then drawing it to a taper, making that spike, and then hand hammering it over the horn of the anvil. After I forge the spikes, I'll uh, chop them to length with the abrasive chop saw. And then the spikes will be plug welded to the back. So I made the cutting edge, heat treated it, tempered it. All right, cool. And welded it. You now razor sharpened it. So I'm happy with this. This can go out. I still need to attach the skull from the inside with the handle. I'll put the base leather over the top, and then in turn cover that with strips of crisscross leather. And then at the bottom of the leather-wrapped oak handle is a copper and nickel-plated butt cap or the butt spike. We're on the final stretch here. A couple all-nighters, totally worth the effort. So when they come out from Blizzard, I want to see their reaction. I know, Are man. you ready? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yes. All right. Well, under our orcish fur kind of presentation. Awesome. I'm ready. Wait for it. Let's see it. Check. Here we go. This out. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy cow. Look at the detail in this thing. I can't wait to see this thing in action. Let's go break some stuff.